Hey all, welcome back to part 3 of data migration. In this video, we are going to migrate all the tables from SQL Server onto ADLS2. Just to do a quick recap, we were able to migrate one table that is employee table from SQL Server onto ADLS2 as a CSV file. All right, so let's get started. There are two ways we can migrate all the tables from SQL Server to ADLS2. First, by having a copy activity data set defined for source and sync for all the tables, just like how we did for one table, which is obviously not a practical and an ideal way of doing things. The second method is by using a for each activity and a copy activity inside of it. This means that we need to run copy activity for each of the table to copy it from source to sync. Before diving into this logic, I want to illustrate a simple example using Python. This is a Python code that has a print function. The job of this function is to print whatever you feed and just like the job of the copy activity in ADF was to move data from source to sync. Now, if I want to print a list of tables, I can have as many as print statements as I can. But again, just like the ADF copy activity, this wouldn't be an ideal approach. Rather, you can have something like list of tables. For this example, let's take employee and department. This one. And then you just have to iterate on each table. And just print it out. Just like this. So we need to do something like that in the ADF side as well. Pass in a list of tables to copy activity so that it does the appropriate job. This is called handling the things dynamically, where you don't specify anything manual. You just specify a list of tables needed to be migrated and everything will be handled by the function. So let's see how it's done. All right, so the way we are gonna make copy activity dynamic is updating the data sets. So first we are gonna update source data, data set to handle stuff dynamically. So go to source and click on the pencil icon to open the data set. And here, as you know, we have hard coded employee table. So we're going to remove that hard code and add a table schema and table name. And we're going to pass those parameters dynamically. So go to param parameters, click on new. and define two parameters, schema name and table name. So these two parameters will be passed at runtime. So as you can see, to point to this employee table, we need human resources dot employee. So we're gonna remove this and add dynamic content over here. Select our parameters that we just defined. and save it. All right, so you can hit the preview data to see how this thing works at runtime. So if you see, if we dynamically specify human resources dot department, it will fetch us the data from that table. So hit okay. Please ignore this error. All right, so you can see uh, that we are able to preview the data. The error that came in earlier was from publish as this activity is still not defined. So we're gonna define it and get rid of that error. So now that we have our source data set, uh, all converted dynamic, 
we are going to do the same on the sync side so go back to our sync our data set click on the pencil icon and over here what we're going to do is create the file name dynamic so similarly go to parameters and we're going to give a file name add dynamic content Right, so I'm gonna copy this name. Okay. So after this as successfully defined, we can again test it out by previewing data. If you remember, we have our file name defined as human resources dot employee.txt. Also note, you can change all these parameters to be dynamic, but for this tutorial purpose, we're just gonna stick with migration data folder as our staging folder. It takes a while, but I promise it shows up real quick so while this is being previewed all right so looks like uh, we have all the data successful over here all right so now that our source and sync has been converted to dynamic the next step is to get a list of tables so first we need to get a list of tables to feed into our for each activity the way we can do that is head back to our sql server and query information schema. It's a schema that holds the metadata in a database. So information schema dot tables should give you a list of tables along with views. Note that we are just going to migrate tables. So we are going to add a filter here. Executing that gives us 71 rows, indicating that there are 71 tables that we can migrate. So to get that query into the for each loop, we're going to use another activity called as lookup. So the lookup activity allows us to execute the query and get the result as the list of tables that we can again feed into the for each activity. So to do that, you can search lookup, drag and drop. And once it's here, click on the lookup activity and click on settings here you can define a source data set along which you can query note that we see a kind of unsaved uh, mark on these two data sets from our previous modifications and to save it we need to hit publish so currently this won't be published because what it does is it tries to validate everything uh, and it as you can see on this pencil icon there are three uh, changes that we have done so one for the pipeline and two for data sets and our data set changes are good and we'll get an error on this pipeline so as you can see uh, we haven't provided a few parameters that we initially defined for schema name and stuff like that so for this to work first we're gonna come back we'll delete this and then go to the source and let's give this a schema name i'm gonna give it human resources And then I'm going to give a dummy sync name or employee file name. This is just a dummy parameters we are going to put in for now to kind of save this pipeline with all our changes. So if you see, most of our issues are fixed. 
it's also asking for a table name so table name and schema name so clicking on this and then try to save this left with one thing so probably change this and bring our source back there we go we see two parameters now human resources and we are gonna give employee here okay and try to publish this You should see a successful publish. And hit the publish button. All right, so now that our code is published, so this is one way that we have defined this uh, dynamically, where we pass in the source name and give it a sync name and then it will dynamically go fetch that table and sync it accordingly. So let's bring our lookup and for each back. So let's redefine our lookup again. Uh, click on the lookup, go to settings, select our SQL Server employee source, here we're gonna give uh, a query to query the list of tables copying the query back give some dummy values and schema name and table name Uncheck the first row only option and hit preview data. You can drag and drop this green arrow to the for each loop saying the contingency of this activity. All right, so you can see the preview data being able to show you a list of table scheme and table names. Normally, it's just 10 rows that it shows you. So close this. As I was saying, uh, you can drag and drop this green arrow onto this for each activity to show the dependency of this for each activity. And now go inside this for each activity and you have your copy table data here. So the way we are gonna iterate over those list of tables is by passing in that list of tables reference to our for each activity. Now if you click on settings of this activity, you can see a few properties like sequential, batch count, etc. Uh, these are nothing but the number of activities that you can run in parallel inside of the for each activity. And you can define the order as sequential or not sequential. So clicking on the activities that shows you it's there's just one activity inside. And in the settings, you can see that uh, it's asking for a list here. So you can click on add dynamic content and pass in your reference of this output value over here. Uh, instead of the return value, we are gonna take the value and click okay. And save this. The lookup activity sends its output in a form of JSON, which we use in the for each activity. There's a way you can visualize that. So the way we can do that is just clone this. And we have another pipeline. That's a clone of the first one. I'll delete the for each for now. And then I'm going to hit debug. Oh, 
once it succeeds you can see the output of this activity and you can see 71 counts here so maximize this this is like a dictionary json format so the reference that we are gonna pass in would be output dot value which is a list of all the tables and then we can refer to each schema and each table name by iterating on that uh, list so going back go to our previous pipeline and hit the pencil icon to configure our copy activity go to source again and based on our previous output it's gonna be table schema and table name so we can copy the reference like this back add the dynamic content and each add item or table schema similarly do it for table name as well All right, so now your source is defined. So with our sync, we're gonna get a little bit creative. So click on add dynamic content over here. And then the way we can uh, define different formats in our sync is based on our business needs. So remember, uh, we can define either the table schema or table name or txt or whatever format you want. So we'll go with the first format. So define that we're gonna bring in our item dot table schema and table name so now uh, this is more of a human readable format but Unfortunately, ADF doesn't understand this format. Uh, if you hover over the item, it shows you an error over here. So to fix that, we are gonna make it more ADF understandable format. Okay, so we have used a concat function here to concatenate table schema, table name with an underscore in between and ends with a dot CSV. After this, click okay. Hit debug. And refresh your output. So first we should see the list of tables activity being executed and then for each activity executing multiple copy activities simultaneously. Once it's all successful, you can go back to your storage account to check on those files. Alright, so now you see all your files migrated from SQL Server to ADLS2. Congratulations on achieving this. In the next video, we are going to migrate all these files onto Snowflake. So, thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.